Now, Jyrki Katanen, welcome. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and pleasure for me especially. I worked with Jyrki in our joint hometown, Espo, and as well in the uh, member of the parliament in Finland, uh, been a strong supporter of your government when you were the prime minister in Finland. So welcome to have uh, this debate with us. Uh, this debate is on the contribution of local and regional authorities to the implementation of the SDG Sustainable Development Goals. This debate is very timely, given that this period of transition does uh, constitute a unique opportunity to make the SDGs a guiding principle for the EU future actions. And this, uh, player is a central message uh, of my colleague uh, Arnoldas Abramovicius opinion, so that will be debated and voted uh, just right after this. Uh, given that 65% uh, of the, all the, actually if we go more in detail, not only 17 SDGs, but 169 SDGs in detail, and the, those targets defined, so uh, 65% uh, cannot be reached without the involvement of subnational actors, bottom-up approaches, and multi-level governance. And in this regard, uh, the Committee of the Region would be particularly interested in your vision on the future of EU implementation of the SDGs. And especially now, uh, I don't know if you have already received the Finnish EU presidency brochure, so can I hand it over to you? because that uh, coming six-month period, so that's the, where, as we just today heard from the Prime Minister of Finland announcing, climate all related to that, so including SDGs, is a priority of the Finnish EU presidency. And uh, here especially I want to refer as well, many of our municipalities, our regions, uh, just uh, a few days ago, we got the news that Helsinki, Usima region, the southern part of Finland, is the number one in Europe on, in innovation. And uh, Finland, as a whole country, second after our uh, western neighbor, Sweden. So, with this respect, uh, municipalities like our joint uh, city, Home City Espo, the second largest city of Finland, is a forerunner in implementing these SDGs. And uh, as you know, uh, we are part of the UN SDG 25 plus 5 cities leadership program. Actually, where you uh, just a couple of weeks ago contributed on the SDG Champions Conference in Espo. So that's something that we want to support the others to achieve these targets. And now due to the very busy agenda of our vice president, he needs to leave in uh, a quarter to five. I propose to have the first round of intervention by our political group's representatives, and after that you will as well have a chance to react on those. And then we can continue the debate and give feedback which we can deliver in a written format, the key points of that later on. Now, uh, Mr. Vice President, first the floor is yours. Mr. President, dear Marku, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me a chance to discuss with you on SDGs and sustainability development. Um, I must admit that during this mandate, the Commission has changed uh, partially its working methods. And one of the changes we have done is to upgrade or increase our cooperation between cities and regions. Because we have uh, realized that many of our policy goals are dependent on the active implementations, but also yeah. individual innovations made by cities, mayors and regions. So that's why we have established several cooperating platforms between Commission and cities and regions. For instance, uh, circular economy is one of the examples where cities are front runners, creating new ways to deal with waste 
uh, and 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 creating new ways to to run public procurement processes, for instance. So that's why I'm always very uh, glad to participate uh, the events of uh, of uh, of this this body because um, I, I find uh, committee of the regions and our cities as a major implementing partner and innovation partner. Without this close link, much would, uh, uh, or, or we could not achieve the same goals as what we have planned to do. Let me say a couple of words on SDG policy, which is, by, by the way, or the sustainability is part of our DNA, I mean, EU's DNA. If you look at our treaties, if you look at our policies, you can easily agree with this. So uh, sustainability is part of EU's uh, DNA. We want to, uh, to work in, uh, in two work streams. The first one is to mainstream sustainable development goals in the European policy framework and commission priorities. The second work stream is the reflection paper, which I, will, I, I may say a couple of words uh, later on. First, regarding mainstreaming. Juncker Commission has mainstreamed sustainable development into key cross-cutting agendas, but also sectoral policies and initiatives. I, let me give you a couple of examples of those sectoral policies. Circular economy is one of the examples, which uh, includes steps for changing consumption and production patterns by focusing on the design of products, waste management, and increasing consumer awareness. Second is uh, the EU plastics strategy and the legislation on single-use plastics, uh, which will protect the environment from plastic pollution while fostering growth and innovation. The renewed EU bioeconomy strategy will help to improve, scale up the sustainable use of renewable resources. Also, sustainable finance. Hopefully, you have managed to, to, find, uh, to find it. Because I, I believe that sustainable finance initiatives may be the biggest single uh, initiative which will change the world. The investment plan for Europe as a last example, which has boosted investment for Europe's future, for instance, in renewable energy, circular economy, the digitization, innovation and social entrepreneurship. A couple of words about our reflection paper. Uh, towards a sustainable Europe by 2030. It, it presents a vision for a sustainable European future for the European Union. We published it in January uh, this year together with Vice President uh, Franz Timmermans. The paper forms part of the discussion on the future of Europe. Its aim is to inspire the discussion on the political priorities post-2019. It also contains different scenarios which offer ideas to spur the debate and thinking. And we are thankful for uh, your contribution, and especially I would like to thank Rapporteur Arnondas Abramovicius and all members of Econ Commission for draft opinion and for inviting, uh, for inviting Commission to the exchange views uh, on the basis of your report. This is exactly what we wanted. This is exactly what Commission wanted. To, to promote debate, collect good ideas, and also help to, to get ideas how we could reshape our policies beyond this political mandate. So I, I do appreciate your, your hard work also in, in this file. But my, my final point I want to make is the localization of SDGs. 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goals are a collaborative blueprint that needs to be taken forward in partnership with all, including the private sector, social partners, civil society, academia, and citizens at large. 2030 agenda underlies the national ownership is key to achieving a sustainable development. Public authorities at national regional and local levels, uh, levels are in a key position as progress on sustainable development goals depends largely on their, or I should say, your action. As pointed out in the draft opinion of this committee, 
5 percent of 169 targets of SDGs need local and regional engagement and actions in order to be achieved. At sub-national or local level, decision makers have to make sustainable development a reality. This means balancing its participatory social, economic and environmental dimension. Sub-national entities and cities are key players in the implementation of SDGs on the ground. That's why, uh, and also uh, honoring our president here, I, I would like to mention or repeat what he already said. Uh, region Uusima so in southern Finland is, has been selected the most innovative area or the region in the world. So why I'm mentioning this, not only because of the president, not only because I'm a Finn, but because innovations are coming from regions. Every single innovation happens in some particular point of uh, geography. So that's why it's good that there is a competition between the regions and cities who are, who are, uh, who are the most innovative, driven, innovation-driven economies. Because uh, without this competition, there is no innovation, there is no SDG uh, uh, achievements. Also, um, honoring uh, the, the coming presidency, Finnish presidency, Lahti was uh, selected not only because of this, or not at all because of uh, becoming presidency, but the uh, Finnish uh, middle-sized town, Lahti, was uh, elect elected as a green capital of uh, Europe. And again, this is a town where they have purified the lake water. If you are walking around the lake, you can drink the lake water. And they have get rid of coal as part of their um, uh, energy production. They are using only uh, renewable uh, sources for, for energy production, etc., etc. Again, without this local effort, there wouldn't be new innovations, there wouldn't be new business models, there wouldn't be growth which is based on more sustainable model. So that's why I cannot uh, highlight enough the importance of local authorities on uh, achieving SDG goals. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And especially what you said, uh, the last part of your speech about what does localization mean and why our members, we can contribute a lot. Now, very short interventions by political groups. EPP will start. Uh, the rapporteur, uh, Arnoldas Abramovicius, the floor is yours. And I'll remind you about the time. So it's very strict now that we want to get the feedback from the uh, Vice President as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Markula. Uh, dear Mr. Vice President Katainen, uh, on behalf of the APP group, I want to thank you for coming to plenary session and made the statement. As you already mentioned, I'm a rapporteur on SDG and I have also honor participate in the multi-stakeholder platform and SDG and hope it helped us to find better communication. So there's a many challenges for the regions and the cities need to appropriate support in their efforts to be the front runners of sustainable development. And today we need to discuss these challenges. First, I want to mention it is vital for appropriate basis, basis to exist which would facilitate the implementation of the SDGs by the member state, but also by the local and regional authorities. In this context, the Commission needs to provide, as stipulated in the Scenario 1, we are strongly advocated for the Scenario 1, an overarching strategy containing clear targets, timelines and deliverables by 2030. This would have the advantage of uh, going beyond the political cycles and of addressing all issues simultaneously. The strategy for sustainable Europe 2030 should succeed the current Europe 2020 strategy with access to the future MFF. Secondly, as was already mentioned, it is essential to use bottom-up approaches and the active involvement of subnational actors in order to reach all 169 SDG targets. Third, the implementation of this strategy will require considerable investment. This can be achieved by various means. 
cohesion policy is the EU most important investment instrument for the regions and cities to implement sustainable development objectives. Other existing horizontal tools also can be also mainstream SDGs in the all politics. Such instrument as existing European semester instrument and the better regulation guidelines. So I want to uh, give a, one example from my own municipality. I'm from the Zarasei municipality in Lithuania. It's rather small. But together with the other Lithuanian municipalities, we are implementing a comprehensive program of old Soviet-style Soviet municipal blockhouses renovation to make the energy efficiency program. From one side, it helped to save energy. From the other hand, it helped to save money for the poor people, because mostly the poor people live in those old Soviet houses. And it helps uh, for the SDGs as well. It's a perfect example from uh, ESPO uh, municipality, where the uh, set the targets uh, to reach uh, uh, objectives five years ahead of schedules and many more examples from from uh, the cities and the region so let me ask one question what is your view the matter and how you're planning to proceed following the publication of the new strategic agenda for ne for the next commission mandate it's very e important for that Let's go back to the implementation process of this strategy and let's consider some other elements that may contribute to its success. As mentioned earlier, it's important to continue our work on the relevant platform of the European Commission. That may have a different format, but overall, I am in the view that form of collaboration should be established between the Commission and other partners and the platform, multi-stakeholders multi platform, is a perfect tool for that. Thank you. Time Thank is you. due. Next is PES group and it's uh, Peter Kurz. Please, you have three minutes. Herr Präsident, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, ich darf für die PES Gruppe einige Worte zum Thema sagen aus Sicht einer Stadt, die einige Erfahrung hat in der Implementierung eines neuen Governance Modells unter dem Rahmen der SDGs. Ich möchte fünf Anmerkungen machen. Das eine ist zunächst einmal zum Reflexionspapier der Kommission. Ich denke, es ist sehr deutlich, dass nur das Szenario 1 tatsächlich und in eine nachhaltige Zukunft führen kann und das entsprechend die Orientierung gibt, weil es geht um eine kohärente Strategie. Es geht eben nicht um eine Addition von verschiedenen sektoralen Politiken, wo wir sagen, jetzt tun wir etwas für die Umwelt, dann müssen wir ausgewogen auch etwas für die Wirtschaft tun und umgekehrt, sondern es geht genau darum, tatsächlich eine kohärente Politik zu definieren. Und das geht nur tatsächlich, wenn man das als eine gesamthafte Strategie sieht. Das ist mein zweiter Punkt. Es geht, glaube ich, nicht um eine Nachhaltigkeitsstrategie, sondern es geht um eine EU-Strategie, die nachhaltig ist. Das heißt, Es gibt kein separates Nachhaltigkeitspolitikthema, sondern die gesamte Politik muss sich nachhaltig entsprechend orientieren. Die Dimension, um die es geht, ist nicht weniger als eine Transformation unseres Wirtschaftssystems und unseres Lebensmodells in Richtung Nachhaltigkeit. Und wir haben 200 Jahre Erfahrung mit einer deutlichen Dynamisierung von Wirtschaftswachstum, aber eben einer damit auch nicht nachhaltigen Politik. Das heißt, hier eine neue Politik zu finden. Dafür gibt es, und sie auch durchzusetzen und nicht allein auf Technik und Marktentwicklung zu setzen, bedeutet tatsächlich eine Transformation, vor der wir nicht genau wissen, wie wir sie letztendlich bewältigen können. Die Größe der Herausforderungen, glaube ich, muss uns präsent sein. Und deswegen sind wir ja auch nicht da, wo wir sein wollen. Deswegen ist ja die Herausforderung so groß und die Zeit läuft ab. Bis 2030 müssen wir tatsächlich einen Turnaround geschafft haben. Das gilt insbesondere, vierte Anmerkung, für die Klimapolitik. Aber Klimapolitik ist nicht der einzige, einzige Baustein einer nachhaltigen Politik. Und wenn wir keine gesamthafte Nachhaltigkeitspolitik betreiben, dann drohen wir sogar politisch zu scheitern. Das heißt, wenn die soziale Dimension nicht berücksichtigt wird, gesamthaft, werden wir auch entsprechend für eine Klimaschutzpolitik keine entsprechende Zustimmung bekommen. 
Die fünfte Anmerkung geht in Richtung Governance. Ich glaube, es geht um Reporting, es geht um Multilevel Governance. Und ich möchte als Beispiel, positives Beispiel äh, nennen, die eu städteagenda die sollte Orientierungspunkt sein für die Art der Kooperation, für die ich mich auch sehr bedanke, dass nämlich die Kommission tatsächlich die Kommunen und die Regionen wirklich deutlich intensiver adressiert hat als in der Vergangenheit. Ich möchte gerne schließen mit einer Einladung. Im nächsten Jahr 2020 wird es eine Europakonferenz der nachhaltigen Städte und Gemeinden in meiner Stadt Mannheim geben, die ICLEI Europakonferenz. Es wird genau um die Frage gehen, wie organisieren wir die Transformation äh, gemeinsam und wie organisieren wir Multilevel Governance. Wir sind herzlich eingeladen. Okay, thank you. And the next is uh, ALDE Group or the new Renew Europe Group is Mr. Verfali. Please, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Monsieur le Vice-Président, de votre présence. Ce débat sur la localisation des objectifs de développement durable dans l'Union est d'une très grande importance pour nous. Ce sont les collectivités locales et régionales qui développent et développeront les projets, modernisent et moderniseront les infrastructures, travaillent et travailleront directement avec nos concitoyens pour mettre en œuvre les ODD, et c'est nous qui subissons déjà les conséquences négatives du changement climatique. Les événements naturels sont plus prononcés et mettent plus de pression sur notre capacité à garantir les services publics. Je souscris pleinement à l'avis de mon collègue que nous adopterons aujourd'hui, en particulier l'importance d'opter pour le scénario 1 des trois scénarios présentés par la Commission. C'est le seul qui implique de manière adéquate tous les niveaux de gouvernement et garantit un engagement à l'échelle de l'Union en faveur de la mise en œuvre des objectifs de développement durable. Je voudrais souligner en particulier les mesures que nous devons prendre pour internaliser pleinement le concept d'une économie circulaire neutre en carbone. La gestion responsable de la production et des ressources doit être un élément clé de notre stratégie industrielle. C'est pourquoi je salue également l'avis de Jeannette Ballieu, qui a placé l'économie circulaire au cœur de ses recommandations en faveur d'une politique industrielle de l'Union fondée sur une approche territorialisée. L'économie circulaire est une excellente opportunité pour les villes et les régions de l'Union, car elle utilise les ressources locales et renforce la résilience de nos économies locales. Elle crée des emplois locaux qui ne peuvent être délocalisés hors d'Europe. Concernant ce thème de l'emploi, il y aura de nouvelles opportunités et de nouveaux défis. Nous devrons repenser notre façon d'innover, de concevoir de nouveaux produits et services. Une nouvelle, pensée, une nouvelle façon de penser sera suivie de nouvelles compétences requises. Il est donc nécessaire de faciliter l'accès à l'éducation et à la formation tout au long de la vie. Il ne faut pas non plus oublier les technologies de l'information qui joueront également un rôle clé car elles optimisent la façon dont nous interagissons, produisons et consommons. Des investissements massifs seront nécessaires pour adapter nos réseaux aux besoins de l'économie circulaire et c'est au niveau local que nous devons le faire. La localisation des ODD impliquera une coopération beaucoup plus étroite entre les industries, la société civile, les autorités locales, les écoles et les universités. Afin d'avancer aussi vite que possible et de rester sur la bonne voie, nous, dev, nous ne devrions plus utiliser l'argent de l'Union pour des projets qui ne suivent pas de très près la voie de la localisation et de la mise en œuvre des objectifs de développement durable. Nous avons maintenant pratiquement adopté les ODD comme stratégie de développement. Soyons cohérents et diligents dans leur mise en œuvre. Merci de votre attention. Thank you very much. And next, uh, we have from European Alliance, uh, Mrs. Uh, Borrell Porta, the floor is yours, two minutes. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank, as a member of the European Alliance, this opportunity which brings together the European Commission and the regions. And if you allow me, I'd like to take this opportunity to showcase the case of um, Catalonia in implementing the SDGs. Catalonia has had a strong commitment with uh, the 2030 Agenda since the very beginning in the international arena and through the network for regional government on sustainable development. We have actively participated in the definition of SDGs and in the domestic arena, we are committed to involve all actors, which is also um, a key principle of SDGs. The governmental independent bodies have been involved from the very beginning, more specifically the Advisory Council for Sustainable Development of Catalonia has led, written and delivered the report called the 2030 Agenda, Transform Catalonia, Improve the World, which has served as a basis for government action. The government began two years ago a plan to implement um, 
um, SDGs involving all Catalan ministries. The plan will be approved this July and it will translate 17 SDGs into more than 800 concrete actions and measurable commitments which are being updated annually. At the same time, the Parliament has committed, uh, binded itself to sustainable development goals with a motion, a motion that binds advisory, the Advisory Council for Sustainable Development to appear two years, uh, every two years to explain the attainments in SDGs. And it also establishes periodic appearances by regional ministers to take stock of what has been done at Catalan level. And finally, the, the government, the Catalan government is elaborating also a national agreement that paves the way to an alliance of public and private actors to achieve SDGs through specific commitments. Um, I wouldn't like to finish without thank you the Committee of the Regions for its commitment to reinforce the role of regions and local government in enhancing SDG agenda. Thank you. Thank you. And now ECR, Mr. Ortil. Dziękuję bardzo. Panowie przewodniczący, szanowni państwo, koniecznym jest, aby w tej dyskusji podkreślić, że agenda 2030 stanowi odpowiedź na zagrożenia, wyzwania związane z procesem globalizacji. Agenda ma charakter uniwersalny, a wskazane w niej cele są bardzo ambitne, mają wymiar oczywiście gospodarczy, społeczny i środowiskowy. Tak podkreślił przewodniczący Marku Markula, cele zrównoważonego rozwoju są podzielone na 169 zadań, z czego 65% jest przypisanych, a właściwie musi być realizowanych z władzami lokalnymi i regionalnymi. Nic tu oczywiście odkrywczego nie powiem, ale warto to zauważyć, że w realizację zadań muszą się właśnie, właśnie włączyć władze regionalne, władze lokalne, które w najbliższym otoczeniu obywateli przebywają i są odpowiedzialne za identyfikowanie głównych problemów, problemów oczywiście realnych. Powinny zatem mieć większy wpływ na element programowania czy kształtowania polityki. Czy wymiary Agendy 2030 wyraźnie korespondują z europejską polityką spójności, która zgodnie z zapisami traktatowymi powinna nadal służyć niwelowaniu różnic rozwojowych regionów i oraz ułatwić im e, oczywiście nadrabianie zaległości. Rola i znaczenie władz samorządowych, zarówno regionalnych, jak i lokalnych, systematycznie wrasta z polityce spójności i tak powinno być też i będzie w przyszłości. Zgodnie ze sprawozdaniem onz owskiej Komisji Burtlanda, zrównoważony rozwój to taki rozwój, który zaspokaja dzisiejsze potrzeby, ale nie zagraża oczywiście spełnieniu potrzeb przyszłych pokoleń. Musimy zatem dzisiaj działać, podejmować, realizować projekty, ale myśleć też konsekwentnie o przyszłości, aby tej przyszłości nie szkodzić. Ważną rolę na zakończenie chcę powiedzieć, mają w tym kontekście do odegrania instrumenty, które integrują społeczność państw i regionów europejskich, w tym także sporza Unii Europejskiej, takie jak strategie makroregionalne. Tak więc nowe inicjatywy powinny być wspierane okay, i you. a aktualne wzmacniane. Thank you. And now we'll have uh, Peter Kaiser. One minute, please. Danke. Nachhaltigkeit braucht Beispiele. Im Regierungsprogramm beispielsweise des Bundeslandes Kärnten heißt es sinngemäß, wir müssen mit unseren Ressourcen so umgehen, dass unsere Kinder und Enkelkinder intakte Zukunftschancen auf eine gesunde Umwelt vorfinden. Um dem gerecht zu werden, werden in Kärnten hinkünftig politisch-budgetäre Entscheidungen an ihre Vereinbarkeit mit den 17 UN-Nachhaltigkeitszielen gemessen werden. Nicht zuletzt dank des aufrüttelnden Engagements der Friday for Future Bewegung muss uns allen, der Politik insgesamt wie ebenso der Wirtschaft und Industrie und jedem einzelnen Menschen bewusst werden, dass wir alles zu tun haben, um den ökologischen und ökonomischen Raubbau an unseren Lebensressourcen zu beenden. Wir müssen uns von Dreamers to Doers, von Träumern zu Handelnden entwickeln. Politisch deutlich ausgesprochen heißt das, nachhaltiges statt unreflektiertes quantitatives Wachstum muss unter Miteinbeziehung der EU-Kohäsionspolitik unsere Antwort auf den vorherrschenden Neoliberalismus sein. Gefordert sind insbesondere oh, wir alle you. in den Regionen und den Städten Europas. And now our final contribution, Rapporteur Sirpa Hertel. You have three minutes. Uh, Sir Bahretel is having the, the other opinion, which will be 
debate it and vote it in the October plenary on the SDGs. Thank you. Arvoisa komission jäsen Katainen, kiitos, että tulitte keskustelemaan kanssamme kestävän kehityksen tavoitteiden toimeenpanosta. Minä olen EPP-ryhmästä ja esittelijä SDG 2030 lausunnosta, eli kestävän kehityksen ilmasto- ja energiaan liittyvistä näkökohdista vuoteen 2030 mennessä. Olen myös Espoon kaupunginvaltuuston jäsen, ja kuten tiedätte, Espoo kuuluu SDG City Leadership Platform-ohjelmaan, jonka tavoitteena on toteuttaa kestävän kehityksen tavoitteet viisi vuotta ennen vuoden 2030 määräaikaa, eli jo vuonna 2025. No, Brysselissä ja kotikaupungissani Espoossa tehdyn työni ja kokemukseni perusteella haluaisin esittää komissiolle muutaman kysymyksen. Ensinnäkin... Tarvitsemme selkeän eurooppalaisen strategian kestävän kehityksen tavoitteita varten. Tällaisella strategialla olisi varmistettava, ympäristö, varmistettava kokonaisvaltainen lähestymistapa ilmastonmuutokseen, ympäristöön ja biologiseen monimuotoisuuteen. Toiseksi, kaupungit ja alueet vastaavat 65 prosentista kestävän kehityksen tavoitteiden toteuttamisesta Euroopassa. Me edustamme kolmasosaa julkisista menoista ja kahta kolmasosaa julkisista investoinneista, ja voimme menestyksekkäästi toimeenpanna sdg käytäntöön vain, jos eurooppalaiset ja kansalliset tasot toimivat yhteistyössä alueellisten ja paikallisten tasojen kanssa. Kolmanneksi, globaalit tavoitteet on muutettava käytännöiksi paikallistasoilla. Meidän on työskenneltävä yhtenäisten kattavien paikallisten tavoitteiden ja täytäntöönpano toimien ja indikaattoreiden avulla, joilla voidaan mitata ja seurata meidän edistymistä. Ja neljänneksi, tarvitsemme vahvempia yhteyksiä ilmastonmuutoksen, energian ja ympäristön, julkisen ja yksityisen rahoituksen välille. Tarvitsemme myös enemmän rahoituslähteiden välistä synergiaa. Näitä haasteita on käsiteltävä lähitulevaisuudessa. Ja lopuksi. 8. heinäkuuta järjestämme Espoossa seminaarin innovatiivisista paikallisista toimista kestävän kehityksen tavoitteiden saavuttamiseksi. Keskustelemme tärkeimmistä keinoista ja esteistä siirtymiselle vähähiiliseen, ilmaston kannalta neutraaliin ja resurssitehokkaaseen ja biologisesti monimuotoiseen kaupunki, kaupunki- ja aluekehitykseen. Toivotan teidät lämpimästi tervetulleeksi Espooseen heinäkuun 8. päivänä jatkamaan tätä erittäin mielenkiintoista keskustelua. Kiitos. Okay, thank you, Sirpa. And now I'll give the floor to Vice President Jyrki Katainen to react on some of these issues. Thank you very much. Um, there were very good points, and it's very easy to to agree with uh, with most of the ideas. If you allow, I would like to raise five points, which I would like to concentrate on if I was a dictator of Europe. Okay. Um, the number one thing is that we all need to invest more in education. Because um, the education is the ma major source of social equality. It's the way to improve resilience of our societies, but also our individuals in the time, in the era of changing working life, for instance. And it's also the way to encourage people to do more conscious choices, which are wiser uh, than what we otherwise would do in terms of, uh, of environmental, um, uh, environmental uh, effects. Second, I would like to, to raise the EU budget on research, because it's the way to combine the skills and research units of our regions and help them to cooperate and, and get more out of the money they are consuming. So that's why the Horizon Europe is such an important issue that I do hope that we could get your support uh, when we have proposed uh, to increase the amount of uh, Horizon Europe. It's a strategic issue for overall Europe. Third, I would like to 
to concentrate more, and I do hope that the next Commission also would concentrate on circular economy. And there, the connection between the regions and cities and Commission is of utmost importance. Because uh, you know your companies, you are the innovators yourself, and we need best practices from you, you guys to understand how Commission could regulate or change the regulation in order to improve uh, the state of, uh, of uh, circular economy. Fourth, and this may become the biggest threat for Europe, is the deterioration of rule of law in our member states. Unfortunately, we are in the situation today where some of our political leaders seem to think genuinely that the liberal democracy or rule of law is old-fashioned concept. This is not the case. There is not integrated Europe, neither sustainability, equality of people without well-functioning liberal democracy and, as part of it, rule of law. And here again, we need leaders in local level to defend this fundamental value. And finally, I would like to, in, uh, I would like to invest more in and concentrate more on artificial intelligence. From a technology point of view, it's important to invest more in artificial in intelligence, but also from public uh, services point of view, because uh, if we manage to use the public knowledge we have, about the public data we have, we can improve the quality and accessibility uh, of uh, public services. It also helps to raise productivity of the public services. This is one aspect. The second aspect related to artificial intelligence is that we have to make sure that once artificial intelligence is disruptive, in many sense, some jobs will disappear, new jobs will arise, we have to take care of our people. We have to take care of those who already are in profession, but are, are, uh, are most probably losing their job because of the, the modern technologies. We have to make sure that our adult education systems are up to date. So we all need to look at our current systems that they can serve their purpose also in the era of artificial intelligence and help people to get a new job and reskill themselves before it's too late. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable President, thank you very much for giving me a chance to discuss with you, and let's keep in close contact also from now on. Thank you very much. Thank you, and... <clears throat> Let me just say that according uh, on your five key points, so especially we have several opinions on the education, so we give a strong support on that. Christophe Clercheur, as a rapporteur on Horizon Europe, has done a lot. Now we continue on working on that so that we will get the final uh, uh, outcomes of that on the level that you asked for. Circular economy, as already you heard the feedback here, rule of law is in several of our opinions, uh, resolutions by the political groups, strongly there. And uh, finally, then, uh, what you said about the digitalization, so I can convince, since I've been the rapporteur for Digital Europe. So we'll move on, and now Anne Karjalainen from Finland, she will be the rapporteur during the Finnish EU presidency on the request of the Finnish government on that topic. So there's a lot that we will do as a follow-up and link those, hopefully all, to SDGs as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.